and welcome to HCGI. My name is Josh uh, and today I'm going to be showing you how to simulate one of these popper toys using Encloth. So Encloth is Maya's built-in cloth simulation tool and it's a really quick way to simulate cloth but it's a very flexible system so you can also use it to simulate other materials like uh, you can deform materials like metal and wood or plastics and you can even shatter stuff and even use it to inflate things like balloons or bouncy balls and stuff. Um, but today I'm going to be using it to simulate a uh, kind of rubbery plastic material like this popper. Uh, yeah, so let's begin. So the way I'm doing this in Maya is I'm going to make a low poly popper and simulate that with end cloth. And then we're going to wrap to form a higher poly one onto that. So we get our final popper with thickness and stuff. All right, so let's begin by creating a sphere. Uh, and I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. So it's about four units across, four centimeters is what I'm using. So that looks about right. Um, and then I'm going to delete these bottom faces here, just select those uh, and delete those. So this is kind of our base low poly popper geo. So if we go ahead and freeze transformations and then we'll delete the history as well. Um, Okay, and let's rename that to popper low because that's our low poly one. Uh, so now let's make, we're going to use a blend shape to actually create the popping shape. So if I duplicate that and move it over here to the right, and we'll call this one popper blend shape, like that. Um, so if we make, let's make the connection now. Um, going to select the blend shape and then select the low poly one shift select that and just go to the animation tab deform and then click blend shape and when you select the low poly one now you should see under inputs blend shape one so that's how you know it's worked and if we go to window animation editor shape editor now you'll see there's this popper blend shape and we'll just scale that We'll drag that over to one, so that's got a value of one for now, so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and I'll just keep this down here. So now on our blend shape on the right here, uh, I'm just going to start kind of sculpting into shape. If you select those top vertices and press B to get into soft selection mode, uh, you can press B and drag the size of your sort of soft selection box. And if we do that, I'll just pull these verts down. Uh, Something like something like that for now. We'll we'll go and refine this a bit later. But that's good for now. And you can see the blend shapes working on the on the low poly on the left. Uh if you just go to lighting up here, two sided lighting, it looks a bit better. Okay. So if you drag this you can see that the blend shape is working. Uh if you just drag it back to zero for now, we're gonna make a high poly geo now. Um so select this low poly and duplicate that once more. And we'll call this popper underscore high. Uh, and I'm just going to isolate select that with this button here. So all we're looking at is that for now, the high poly. And I'm going to select all the faces, turn soft selection off with B, um, and go back to modeling and do edit mesh extrude. So we're just going to give this some thickness now. Uh, so I'll pull these in, something like that. That, that looks about right to me. Okay. Um, and I want these two bottom edges to be level. So I'm just going to go into edge mode, select this edge loop by double clicking it, and then uh, just move it up. If you press V and middle mouse, you can snap it up to that vert there. So that looks good. Uh, right. And then come out of isolate select. We'll just click that again. So if we select our high poly, I'm just going to delete history on that again. Edit, delete by type, history. And now we're going to connect the low poly and the high poly. See, they occupy the same space at the moment. We're just going to connect them with a wrap deformer. So we'll select the high poly first, and then we'll select shift select the low poly and go to animation, deform, wrap. So now when you slide this blend shape, You'll see it might be a little bit slower, but the high poly is also going with that as well. 
So now we can go and clean up our blend shape a bit more. Um, if you go to edge select mode, we'll just select some of these edges and pull them down a bit to get the high poly looking a bit nicer. So I'll just go around here. I basically want it to be a nice sort of curve in here. pull these a bit more um, I'm going to turn on wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing a bit better now one a bit lower. We basically want sort of a nice curve under here. Okay, I think that's looking good. Um, if we just go back to object mode. So now if we slide our blend shape you can see goes from inside out to the right around. Okay, so um, now we can go ahead and hide this blend shape. Uh, Control H, we don't need to see that anymore. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hide the high poly as well, just for now. Control H that. So all we're left with is a low poly one now. And we're going to do the animation now to for end cloth so that it sort of pops up at the right time. So I, I think we're going to give it a second. If we go to frame 1 on this shape editor and we drag the popper blend shape all the way to 1 and click here to set a key, that'll set a key there and I think I want it to pop at sort of 1 second into this so we'll go to frame 24 now and I'll drag this down uh, slightly maybe to 0.95 and set another key there and then on frame 25 uh, drag it all the way down to zero and set a key there. Mm -hmm. So if we play this in the viewport now, you'll see it slowly goes down and pops. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, now we can move on to the end cloth. So I'm just going to move this up, up to about five in the y axis. And then we're going to rotate it around this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, not being rotated perfectly will be better for this sim. Um, and then we're going to go to the FX tab, end cloth, and just click create end cloth. So now you'll see when you see when you press play, the popper just falls down. Obviously that's not what we want. So if we go over here, we see in the outline we've got nucleus 1 and end cloth 1 now. If you just select nucleus 1, and go to attribute editor. We want to create a ground plane. So if you go to this ground plane tab here, tick the use plane box, uh, and you'll see now if you play, it hits the floor. Kind of looks a bit weird, but that's that's what we need. Uh, I'm going to set the plane friction to 0 0.5 as well, just so that the pop will stick to to it a bit better. Otherwise, sometimes it slides around a bit. So there we go. Um, and the next thing we want to do is, you notice the popper falls quite slowly. If you dropped it in real life, it would be much faster than that. So the way we're going to fix that is with the space scale. So basically, lowering this makes Maya think the objects in your scene are smaller. So if we try 0 0.1, it's much faster. Maybe maybe I want a tiny bit faster than that. 0 0.05. Okay, I think that feels about right for the speed. Obviously it goes flat now, but we'll fix that next. So if you click on the end cloth node in the outliner, and then we go to the end cloth shape uh, 
section in the attribute editor. Um, just scroll down here to the dynamic properties tab. Um, and, and we're going to want to make some changes here. So stretch resistance, compression resistance. Um, I might make compression resistance, lift that up to 20. That just means it won't sort of squash and stretch quite as much. We don't really want that because it's rubber. Uh, and we will go down to in, uh, rigidity. So that's what we're going to use to make this effect kind of work. Uh, if we just turn that up to 10 and press play, you'll see what happens. So now it keeps its shape. It doesn't really do what we want yet, but it's keeping its shape, which is what we want. It keeps the animation. So uh, just go down and change a few more of these settings. Um, I'm going to lower the lift to 0 0.01. That basically kind of lets it fly in the air a bit. You might you might use that for a piece of paper or something, uh, but we don't really want that. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for the settings. So now what we're going to do, obviously, it doesn't look great in the viewport. It kind of does what we want, but not really. So I think what's going to fix this is the collision settings. So at the moment when it pops from that to that it's happening in one frame and basically Encloth doesn't have enough sub steps to be able to calculate this. It's got three at the moment so it's popping a little bit but it's not really calculating that all the way. Oh, what's happened there? So we're going to set our sub steps to 30 and our max collision iterations to 30 as well and just play that back and see what happens now. So now we're getting a much nicer effect. And that's basically the effect we're going for. So now we can, if I turn off wireframe, yeah. and I'm going to hide the low poly, control H, and show the high poly, shift H. Uh, we'll just play blast that and see what it looks like. Okay, let's make this play blast look a little bit nicer then. Uh, I'm just going to make a plane so that we can have it actually landing on something. So create polygon primitives and plane. And I'll just scale that up. Uh, just about that big. Maybe bigger. And then we're just going to go and pull up some of these edges here at the back. So if I just select that one. Select that edge link, uh, and we'll pull that up. We're just going to kind of create a curve in the background here, and we'll do the same for this one. Pull that up a bit, that one as well. Maybe that's good. Okay, so when it's looking when it's looking like a bit of a curve, just press three, and then we get a nice smooth gradient there. Um, and now let's make a spotlight. Uh, spotlight. And then we're just going to go to panels here and look through selected. So now we're looking through the spotlight and we can kind of aim it exactly where we want. So if you turn on, if you press this button here actually, you can see what the light is hitting. So we want it to cover everything basically. Uh, so if we just zoom out to about there, looks good. And then we'll go to back to panels, perspective, and our perspective camera. Okay, so now our popper has some sort of shading on. If you click this button in the viewport, you can turn on shadows. So now we have a shadow being cast from our spotlight. Uh, and then let's select our popper and give it a different shader. So right click on that, assign new material. And I'm gonna give it a blin. Um, and let's make that kind of a blue color, maybe. Oh, yeah, something like that. Okay, so that's looking a bit nicer. Um, I'm going to create another light now, just an ambient light, just to kind of fake some of that global illumination bounce light and everything. 
we'll turn the intensity down maybe 0 0.1 yeah something like that um, and that will just light everything in the scene that doesn't cast shadows uh, okay and then lastly if we go to the show tab and do show none and then show polygon so all we're looking at it now is the polygons that's what we want and then if we t we can turn on this ambient occlusion button as well and under the show grid if you turn off the grid as well there that should be good uh, now let's rotate our grid around a little bit okay so if we play blast this it should look a little bit nicer Let's loop that. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, hopefully that all made sense. And as you can see, you can use N-Cloth for all kinds of things, not just cloth. So rubber in this case, but metal, wood, anything. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll see you next time.